Hello, and welcome to the Tiny Humanists Podcast. My name is Laura, and I'm coming to you from Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, where I live with my boyfriend, our dog, our cat, and our rabbit. You can find me online as Tiny Human Knits and woo, on Instagram, Ravelry, Etsy, and YouTube, and I will have links to all of my social medias and everything I talk about in the description box below. Hello and welcome. It has been a little while since my last episode. Uh, I haven't, I feel like I haven't done much. I finished a few things like a week ago or so, and since then I've just been sort of like filling time. You know those projects that you leave till later, like, oh, that won't take me long, I'll just finish it later. I've just been doing like those one after the other, just sort of tidying up, refreshing, getting ready for the new year. So it feels like it's been longer than it has been since my last episode, I think, to me, anyway. Maybe it's also because I've been watching so much Vlogmas lately that like, cause, cause you get a daily video from people you usually only get one every week, two weeks, maybe every month. And it's just like in quick succession, so maybe it feels like more time has gone by than it actually has. We're gonna say that's what it is. That's what it is. Perfect. Anyway. Hello. <laughs> oh, I've tried to film this so many times. I feel really stiff today, emotionally, but maybe I'll just talk about what I'm wearing. I'm wearing my Friday tee by Petite Knit today, and I, so I finished this a while ago, not too long, but, um, and I remember talking about it in my podcast that I wasn't sure if I liked the fit of it and like, oh, maybe I'd have to give it away or maybe I wouldn't like it. But actually, when I tried to wear it, I found that I really, really like it. Um, I don't mind the fit at all. And it's just so comfortable and lightweight. So like the way it feels on your body is really nice. And I really, really like it. <laughs> Um, I knit this out of my own hand dyed yarn. The base color is Pale Mushroom and then I used my Jolly Holiday mini skein set to do the stripes. It's a colorway uh, collection that I dyed last year and I lengthened the sleeves. I talked about this in my podcast, but I can't remember which one it was. It was a couple episodes ago, but I lengthened the sleeves to be like three quarter length and I love it quite a lot. I'm almost surprised at how much I like it. But yeah, I talked about in that episode how I did the, um, the sleeve lengthening, whatever. But yeah, it's super comfortable to wear. I'm very happy with it. And I will continue. And it's so, it's so bright and happy. I'm actually, a lot of the times when I look at what I wear versus what my actual personality is, I dress a lot brighter than I actually am in person which I think is quite funny, but I love stripes. I love stripes. And this is not a project for the faint of heart, by the way, it is a one by one broken rib in fingering weight on three millimeter needles. It's a labor of love. But if you have a lot of time and gumption, I would recommend this pattern wholeheartedly. It fits really well. I like it a lot. Can recommend. Anyways, I have three finished objects, three finished knitting objects for you today. I have a couple sewing objects as well, uh, some quilts, but I will leave that till the end just in case that's not really particularly something you're interested in. So I will start off with a pair of socks that I finished. And these are in my mashed potatoes and gravy colorway that I had in my shop a couple weeks ago. And I finally finished the set. Ta-da! And I don't usually talk about like the pattern that I use because it's just my own recipe. I knit 56 stitches. Yeah, I think 56 stitches. I have really small feet. Um, and my, because I know my row gauge is a lot shorter than some other people, I can't really recommend like a pattern because you kind of the thing about sock knitting and I found this from knitting so many pairs of socks that it really does depend on your own gauge foot size and all of that so I can't really like people ask me what pattern I use it's just my own recipe 
But if you are looking for a basic vanilla sock knitting recipe to get you started, I would absolutely recommend either the Crazy Sock Lady. She's got a bunch and uh, she has YouTube videos with tutorials showing how to knit with a bunch of different styles. So if you like DPNs or two magic, or not two magic loop, two uh, fixed circulars or magic loop or whatever, she will have it on her YouTube page. So I'd recommend going to her or to Denise of Earth Tones Girl, same thing. She has some great tutorials to start out with. So if you're just wanting to start knitting socks or you've only knit maybe a pair and you just need some tips, those two ladies are 100% where you should be going to for your information. They are fabulous and they will have all of the answers to any questions that you have. Because again, like this is a personal, I know what fits me. 56 stitches is not gonna fit most people from what I heard. Anyway, that's my first finished object, but my next finished objects are very exciting. I finished my poetry sweater by Sari Nordwind and it's blocked and it looks so much better now. I don't know if you remember. I actually took a picture of the finished sweater before I blocked it, so I might actually insert that here just so you can see the difference, you know, power of blocking. But it is finished. I'm so happy with it. I knit it in an Estelle, um, it was a wool, superwash wool and acrylic blend. I can't remember exactly now. I don't know where the tag is, but it was sent to me by my sister so that I could knit this for her. And now it's done and it's beautiful. It is a completely lace pullover. There's not a single knit row, like plain knit row in this entire garment. And it's beautiful. Sorry, Nordland has some of the most gorgeous patterns ever. Like it's one of those things where it's like petite knit has a lot of basic patterns that fit really well. Like Ho He Look Telly has got a lot of like really easy to wear, wonderfully designed patterns. But then if you like, if you like some pretty detailed, gorgeous sweaters, Sorry Nordland is definitely your designer. I love it so much. I think I knit, I wanna say the fourth size, but I can't entirely remember. It's either the third or the fourth size. And I knit it on a 3.75 millimeter needle. And I knit it almost entirely to pattern, except for I didn't do twisted rib because I'm not really a huge fan of twisted rib. I think it looks a little bit too harsh in a lot of patterns. If the actual patterning in the sweater had had a twisted rib detail, I would have probably done the twisted rib, but since it didn't and it has like the seed stitch and everything in it, I thought just a one by one regular rib would look nicer and I think it does. Um, I know the, the neck opening does seem kind of small, but it sits high, but it's not like strangling and it will stretch out because it is a uh, acrylic blend. Anyway, um, I also didn't do the tubular bind off because I feel for my own personal taste, it's a waste of time for what it looks like. I don't like the way that it looks. I like the line of a cast off a lot better than a tubular. I find when people say it looks so neat and tidy and like finished, I just think it looks like it's stretching out your stitches right at the end. Um, personally, if you like it, do it, great. Um, but I like this better, a lot better. I think that's the only thing I did differently, I wanna say. I'm so happy with it. It was a little tedious by the end just because it's patterning and patterning and patterning, so you can't like, you have to keep looking at a chart. But I think it's gonna look so nice. It's got balloon sleeves, so you don't do any decreases on the sleeves while you're knitting them until right before the cuff. And it looks so cute. From when I tried it on, it just looks adorable, and I think it's gonna look so nice on her. She's very pale, and she's got blonde hair and light eyes, and I just think this color is going to really pop on her, and I'm so excited. <laughs> I have to get it to her before, you know, the holidays. So I'm gonna try and put it in the mail today so she can actually wear it. Oh, I love this so much. It's so beautiful. And yeah, it blocked really nicely. I actually used, um, <coughs> 
I have blocking wires that I've had forever and I've never used them. I don't knit shawls very often. Um, I like knitting shawls, but I don't wear shawls, but uh, I use them to block this. I just sort of put the wires in and then I have those um, like plasticky things with a bunch of needles on them and I just sort of pinned the wire down just because I didn't want there to be any pin stretch marks on any of the lace patterning and it worked really really well. Ah, I love it so much! I added a little bit of a piece of thread in the back so she would know where the back was because I wanted to add a tag but there was no neat way to do it and it is such a high neckline that I didn't want there to be a tag like rubbing up against her neck while she's trying to wear it. And it's so pretty! This honestly it's an easy lace pattern. It looks complicated, but it really, really isn't. Um, the repeats are never longer than 20 stitches, and if you use stitch markers, it's really, really easy to see if you've gone wrong in any place. So honestly, like, oh, so pretty. It's so pretty. And I used entire five entire balls of yarn, and then I had to break into the sixth one for like half of this cuff. So I had like most of one skein left. First I'm going to see if there's anything else I need to say about this besides the fact that it's so pretty. It's not going to be as oversized on my sister as I was hoping. She's daintier than me but she's a little bit bigger in the bust than I am so it'll probably fit a little tighter around the bust but be looser everywhere else which I think will work out really well. She'll just have to wear like a dark camisole underneath. But um, I think that was all I was going to say about it. I cannot wait for her to try this on and send me a picture of what she looks like because she's going to look so darling. But I had, as I said, almost an entire skein of yarn left over and I didn't want to have just a bunch of this random yarn in my stash or send it back to her because like what was she going to do with it? So I decided I was going to knit a hat for my nephew, her son, Axton. So I did. I've had the muscle bra hat pattern by Isolde Teague in my library for a while and I had tried to make one before but the yarn I was using was fighting it so hard and I didn't want to work on it. So I stopped, I pulled that out, um, but I thought this would be the perfect because I wanted it to be a thick hat that he could wear for a while and it's such an easy pattern. It's like, it's just knitting in the round and it's great. Anyway, I knit him a muscle bra hat. It's super cute. I knit it on the same needle that I knit the hat, so it was 3.75 millimeter needle. And you cast on with eight, was it eight stitches? Could be four, I can't remember. You cast on with a few stitches, you join it around, and then you start doing increases in this hat. So you get to a point where you can measure your gauge and the, there's so many charts. This is such a great pattern. It has charts to show you how many increases you need to do to get to the size of hat you want. So you don't need to do a gauge swatch and you can just start from the middle with any yarn, any needle that you want as long as you like the fabric, which I really like this fabric. And then you knit a big long tube until you get to the other side and do decreases. And actually, this, this is all of the leftover yarn. Every bit of it. I actually had to um, go back a few rounds of plain knitting so I could actually finish doing the decreases without running out of yarn. <laughs> it's a bit stressful. Um, yeah, this is, it's such a great hat. And then you just fold it in on itself. There are so many cool versions of this hat. I'm definitely going to be making myself one and maybe one for my boyfriend because, oh my god, I always struggle to put them back together. I don't know why. I'm going to be making a few more of these because I've got a lot of skeins of like DK worsted weight that I, I bought so long ago and now I'm like, I don't know what the intended project was in the first place and I, there's nothing that I really want to make out of them so I think doing hats like this will be really great. Make them for a few people and maybe make them to donate. But I went for a little bit of a bigger size or my gauge was bigger than I made the size for. So, um, to be honest though, Axton comes from a large headed family. <laughs> There's a lot of folks in that side of the family that have like really big heads. So I'm not particularly worried about it not fitting, especially with the, the brim folded up. 
but it should fit him for a good long while and I actually can wear it with the brim folded down and I really like the way that fits so I might actually only make like I might copy this size length exactly so actually I'll put it on right now so it's meant to have the brim folded up but you don't have to um, but yeah I really like the way it fits just straight on so I might measure it before I send it off. I'll measure it uh, lengthwise to see how much in between that I knit. Um, I don't know how to speak anymore. I don't know what's going on with my brain, but I just I can't do it anymore. But I'm going to copy it pretty much exactly. And it's so comfortable. I almost wish I had more of this yarn, to be perfectly honest, because it is so comfortable. But it's like snug on me, which is how I like my hats. So I think it should fit him really, really well. I love it so much and yeah this used every bit of yarn I saved I had a little bit left over but I'm just going to um, store that in a you know future repairs bin just in case something gets a hole in it and needs repair so I have some of the yarn left over I really like this hat <laughs> but now I really need to mail these off because um, there's plenty of time for it to get to her before the holidays, but their post office kind of sucks. So, yeah, I'm gonna try to do that. Anyway, moving right along. I'm very happy with those finished objects, though, to be, to be honest. Very happy indeed. Um, I have two new cast-ons that I'm enjoying immensely. The first one is also for my nephew, Axton. <laughs> So two years ago, before he was born, I knit a Bear Me suit by Hip Knits, I think they're called? Something like that. And I knit it out of some stash yarn that I had bought from a yarn store, I can't even really remember. But I knit the either the 6 to 12 or the 12 to 18 month, and I think it was the 12 to 18 month size. I honestly can't remember. I realized the other day that I never actually made a Ravelry page for it, but she tried it on him the other day and she sent me a picture of him wearing it and he can still barely fit into it. He, it's almost too short and it fits pretty well the rest of his body, but right right by his belly, you can see that his, the buttons on it are gaping, which is so cute. He's one and a half now. And I decided, because I'm trying to knit my stash, try to knit from my stash. So honestly, when it comes to like kid size things, it's perfect for some of my really random stuff that I've had that I don't know what I was thinking when I bought it. I either didn't buy enough or it's yarn that I wouldn't knit for myself anyway. Old, old stash. <clears throat> long story long, I am knitting him another one in the two to three year size and I'm <laughs> thrilled. I can't wait. So I had four skeins of this Knit Picks Simply Wool Worsted in the Winkle colorway. This is the yarn that I'm doing. That. And this is lovely yarn. It's really affordable. It's from Knit Picks. It's wooly, but not scratchy. And it's really lovely to work with. And I started this the other day and I am this far into it. So I've got both legs done and they're so easy. It's just garter stitch. And honestly, I did it in the round. The, the pattern calls you to do it back and forth and then sew it up after. I just did it in the round, it's easy. And then some increases and then you do some decreases right around the crotch. And right now I'm just knitting it to a point um, where it's a certain height and then I'm going to be doing some short row shaping to give the butt a little bit more room and then you knit some more and then I'm going to knit the sleeves separately and then add them on and then do raglan decreases. And I think I should have just enough yarn because this is just halfway into the second skein. So and then it has um, afterwards it has a hood in garter stitch and then you add little ears to it. That's why it's the bear suit. It's so cute honestly. So this is just a great way for me to use up some yarn that I had in my stash that I didn't know what I was going to do with. And it's so cute. 
worked and I'm I really really like knitting for my sister and her son because she truly appreciates how like the time and effort and she just loves hand knitted things like she's one of the most knit worthy people that I know and I'm trying to be a little bit more picky about who I make things for and I know that she's also going to be taking care of them properly so they'll last a really long time and I'm enjoying that so much. I'll have it linked back down below because I'm embarrassingly low on information about it because I can't remember who the actual designer is but I know it is for the hip knit shop that designed it. There's also, I'm sure there's other people who have, I think Knitting for Olive has something similar. But yeah, I'm really enjoying that. It's really fun. It's to the point right now where it's literally just knitting back and forth. So it's really easy. And it's really fun to do while I'm watching vlog videos. The second new cast on that I have is actually something I've never talked about before. And it's actually kind of interesting because I, I was looking for a pattern specifically in like an Aran, yeah, probably an Aran weight. Um, because I have this yarn that has been in my stash for probably about seven years and it's a thicker yarn. It's a reclaimed yarn. So I, I'll show you the yarn actually. This huge ball right here. And this is one of five balls that I had. Um, this is yarn that I got from unraveling a sweater that I bought at a thrift store. And the sweater was one of those that was, it was knit in Ireland out of Irish wool. I don't know if it was something that someone had bought from Ireland or if it was just one of those shops where you can buy hand knit sweaters, but the sweater itself wasn't in amazing shape. So I unraveled it for the yarn and it's really, really delightful. It's really wooly, but not scratchy. Kind of the same as the Simply Wool that I was working, that I'm working with as well. But there's a lot of, um, like joins like this in the yarn from when I was unraveling it. A lot of um, holes, so I just tie them together. So I have, I think I had about 600 grams of this yarn and it's probably a worsted weight, like a heavy DK light worsted. And I had 600 grams of this and the pattern that I'm using, I am knitting together with a strand of undyed Surrey alpaca. And I am knitting this pattern here. I think it's called the Coon Aaron. And it looks so nice. It is a pattern that was designed for Harrisville Designs by Sarah Solomon, a top down textured raglan. And I am knitting the third size, which is 45 and three quarter inches. So this pattern comes the, it's intended to be worn with eight to 16 inches of positive ease, but the highest um, circumference finish measurement is actually 73 and a quarter. So it actually is incredibly size inclusive. So it can go up to, if you wanted the full 16 inches of positive ease, it goes up to a 58 inch bust. But honestly, like you don't, I don't know how many people would be wearing it with 16 inches. Anyway, I'm doing it with it about 10 inches of positive ease, a little bit more. Um, and I'm wanting to do the balloon sleeve option because it comes with either balloon sleeve or tapered sleeve. And I just love a balloon sleeve right now. So I'm knitting that on a 5.5 millimeter needle, which is amazing because it's so fast. Ah, I'm enjoying it so much. And this is where I'm at right now. And I wish you could feel how squishy and soft this is. The If you add Surrey alpaca to anything, it's gonna make it like 10 times squishier. And I just love the raglan detail and like the soft natural color. I'm really excited about it. I'm gonna go back in and pick up for a ribbing at the top and I think mine is going to be a little bit shorter in the raglan than the pattern because I don't really like a really long raglan. I find it impedes your motion and it doesn't fit as well for me. So I shorten the raglan a little bit but I'm really really happy with this. I'm very excited to finish it and then block it because I think it's gonna even out the stitches quite a bit and it's just so squishy. It's so squishy. I'm so happy with this. 
and it's gonna be so so nice to get this yarn out of my stash because honestly I've been moving it around with me for again seven years at least I remember the the value village that I bought it from and that was a long time ago I'm so happy with it the instructions are super clear and honestly there's another version of this sweater that's in DK and I'm very much considering knitting that with some I think this yarn here which is Harrisville Design Nightshade in the street light color and I actually have knit a sweater in this yarn I knit the Oh, crackers. It was a, it was a Hohi Locatelli pattern. It was the v-neck. It wasn't the v-neck boxy, but it is v-neck and it is boxy, but I can't remember what it was called. Anyway, I liked it so much that I bought another sweater quantity of the exact same color, and I think if this one fits me as well as I'm hoping, I'm going to knit it literally again in a different gauge and a different yarn, because I think I really want to knit this again and I have four skeins and I never knew what I was going to knit with it so I think that might be <laughs> the next thing so don't be surprised if the next time you see me I'm knitting another version of this there's just something about a broken rib that calls to me I love it so much it's so delightful but yeah this is really exciting and it's just to the point now where I am losing stitches just gonna pull my needle right out of it. Um, I'm knitting in the round in Broken Rib and it's super easy. I don't even have to pay much attention to it. But yeah, I'm probably just going to spend the rest of the day working on this, maybe watching some anime. I don't know. I don't know yet. I've got a couple um, podcasts to watch, but besides that, I don't know. Yeah. So I have one more project that I'm working on right now that I'm actually going to do a little bit of frogging on before I continue on with it. And that is a pair of socks. It is called the, I think it's called the Holly and Jolly Socks by This Handmade Life. If you are looking for a pattern sock that is absolutely stunning, any of her patterns would probably fit the bill. I also bought another one of her patterns that she just came out with, but I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, so I'm knitting this with my own hand dyed yarn. It was a sock set with three 50 gram minis and it came in the evergreen color, which is the cuff because I don't have the ball in here for some reason. Um, marshmallow and hot lavel. And I cast this on. I cast on the 64 stitch size and I started the cuff with 2 by 2.25 millimeter and then I went to a 2.5 for the color work and it's gorgeous and I love it so much but I actually held the yarn in the wrong hands for the color dominance that I was going for in the color work so I'm going to be ripping this back and starting again and hopefully I can get it to where the the white is standing out a little bit more because I did that in backwards. But it's super simple. It went by so fast. So honestly, it's like a 30 minute job ripping this out and doing it up again. And then I am going to continue it on and do probably heel flap and gusset because it continues on after this pattern, it goes to a two by two pattern with the red and the cream. And it does like sort of a peppermint stripe. And then the bottom is just a one by one um, each color. So it should be really easy to do a uh, heel flap and gusset. And I'm gonna do the heel flap in the green as well. And this is going to be a pair of socks for my cousin Jennifer because honestly, I do not need a color work pair of socks considering I've got 25 pairs of socks here that I haven't even worn yet. So um, yeah, those will be for her. <laughs> Cause I do not need them. I don't, I don't. I need to, start making um I'm probably gonna end up making a lot of DK weight socks for her in future because that's part of my also I have got sock or I've got yarn that I don't know what I'm gonna do with but yeah those are what I'm working on currently I've got a couple of projects that I would really like to start soon and I honestly I might cast them on and then just have them in their project bags ready for me to pick up when I want them I haven't worked on my Dark Cloud by Hohi Locatelli, and honestly, I could probably finish that in like two days or three days, maybe. I might just finish that up really quickly, but I haven't 
been drawn to it. It's almost too easy for what I need right now. <laughs> I need something with like a little bit of texture, not just garter ridge back and forth. But yeah, I really want to cast on the Caspian by Jared Flood, and I want to use this yarn right here is what I've decided I'm going to be using because I really for some reason I really want to knit it in a blue and I ordered this yarn and I thought oh that's not quite right so I actually ordered another yarn and it turned out being like way the wrong color so I'm gonna knit my boyfriend a sweater in that but I've decided that this is fine this is the blue sky fibers wool stock worsted in the loon lake colorway it's 150 gram put up so I've got plenty of yarn and yeah the Caspian is something I've had on my wish list to knit for years. Um, I actually started it at one point and uh, it was actually in reclaimed yarn and I realized I was going to run out before I was done so I ripped it out. <laughs> so um, I'm going to knit it in this. And then I also want to make my boyfriend that Rowan sweater that I showed you last time and then I want to knit the Ingrid in some fisherman's wool that I got the other day. And I just have so many plans. Um, I'm actually considering doing a video showing all of my knitting plans with the yarn that I have in my stash at the moment. I've got quite a few sweater quantities of yarn um, and I want to get get through a few of those. But yeah, I think um, if any of you remember, I mentioned in October, I think it was, um, that I was going to like soft copy uh, Jackie from the Woolen Oak podcast and um, she's trying to knit through half of her stash next year or within a year I can't remember if it was the whole uh, and regardless but I just like I'm not gonna be able to do that I've got way more yarn than she does but I did want to knit 10 kilograms yeah 10 kilograms of yarn from my stash in a year so I think I started that the 18th of October if memory is serving me correctly um I was going to like take off from my total the amount that I bought but I might actually just make two charts and then calculate it at the end <laughs> so I've knit because I'm counting the sweater and the hat that I made for my sister and I think that's about 600 grams so I need to make like a little chart and start actually keeping tally of like how much I've knit out of my stash so that was a tangent to say nothing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't get to talk to anybody. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. So I've got a lot of plans and a lot of yarn and I want to show like what my plans are. If you're interested in that, let me know. I don't know. I'm sure someone would be interested. But yeah, I'm planning on filming that maybe uh, later this week. And then yeah, I'll try to stick to that. But I'm going to be moving into uh, some quilts that I have finished in the last little while. So if you're not interested in that, that is totally fine. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. But um, for those who are interested in it, I finished two quilt tops entirely, technically three, but I didn't take a picture of one of them and I gave it away. Because I give away quilts the same way I give away knits. Um, I'm not sentimental at all. Uh, so if I think somebody else will like it more than I do, then I am very happy to give things away. But I finished two quilt tops, which I will attempt to show you. I'm going to have to do some b-roll because obviously I'm sitting on the floor and I do not have enough room to show you. But I have two quilts here. The first one is, I I got this back from my mother-in-law, and I'll put the designer's name and I'll also link it down below what pattern it is. This one was quite nice. Um, I got this back from my mother-in-law. I'll show you a bit and then show you a different video. And I trimmed, I trimmed it and I sewed the binding on, because I always sew the binding onto the front and then I hand tack it to the back and I had it ready to go, the binding was sewn on, it was clipped, I just needed to sew it down for weeks, and I had it on a chair in my living room, and my cat kept sleeping on it, and I didn't want to disturb her, so I just kept leaving it on the chair. She's so spoiled, it's unbelievable. So it was ready to go for the longest time, but like, she was cozy. But I got back the next quilt that I finished, and 
I don't have enough of the clips that I use to um, have clipped down the binding on this one and it needed to be done. It was for a Christmas gift. So that spurred me to sew down the binding on this quilt so that I can sew the binding down on the next quilt. But I want to say this one is by Brittany. Actually, I'm not even going to guess. There's so many quilt designers that I really, really love. And I used fabric that I got from, I think it was a fat quarter set. I got it from Cotton Ear, which is my all time favorite place to get fabric. They're, they curate bundles that I always love. The fabric that they sell, I honestly, if I told someone, like if they asked what I wanted for Christmas or my birthday or whatever, I'd be like fabric from there and they couldn't go wrong. I love their fabric so, so much. But I used a fat quarter set and I used some beautiful dark green background fabric. And this, I believe this was the quilt that I was making right before we were moving from Alberta to New Brunswick. And actually I would have finished, but I ended up ordering the wrong background fabric because I had ran out. And then I had to order more and then I had to send it off. Anyway, doesn't matter. But my boyfriend really, really likes this one. He loves the dark background fabric. It's a lot more um, visually pleasing for him. But yeah, so I had to finish this one. It's been washed. I like to throw my quilts in the washing machine immediately after I finish them. But I finished that really quick so that I could finish the next one. And this one is a Christmas gift for a young lady. She just turned five and she loves unicorns. And I knew that. So when I saw this pattern, it had just come out. It is a pattern by Apples and Beavers. I'm sorry, but I cannot remember the lady's name, um, but that's her company name. And it was so perfect that I had to make it for her. This is a problem I have. I'm such a gift giver, but if I see something for s that would absolutely 100% go for someone, like or like match their personality, what they're interested in, I can't help but get it make it for them it's a problem but I'm gonna show again some some full fo footage but like it's a unicorn quilt and it's so sweet and this one I actually only the only fabric I had to buy for this quilt was the backing fabric because I didn't have enough of anything that matched and so I just got this fabric that sort of matches all of the flowers that I had in the front and that was all I had to get and it's so sweet. It was such an enjoyable quilt to make. It had just enough interest to keep me going without stopping. I finished it in two days and it was so fun to make. It's my favorite kind of quilt, something that's constantly changing and like there's a little bit of you know, a few easier portions and then kind of tedious ones and I really like that and it was just so, so fun to make. And I really enjoy it and I think she's really, really gonna like it. So I sent it off to my mother-in-law for quilting and she did a, a speed job for me. And it's, it's so well done, I'm so happy with it. And yeah, I just finished sewing the binding on yesterday and then I threw it in the wash, so. Cause yeah, I threw it in the wash cause I really like the crinkle factor and I also want any like issues to expose themselves after being put in the washing machine cause a lot of times they do. And actually I'm glad I did because when I put it in the wash, the eye, the eyelash thing that I put here, it was actually starting to peel off a little bit. So I just did a quick sew around that to tack it down. But yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. The designer also has a dragon quilt top. I have the pattern already, but I've never made it. So finishing this honestly really makes me want to start on that. And that might be one of the things that I do when I take a little bit of time off. Um, it's so sweet. I'm so happy. I'm going to wrap it up today in a big box and then I'll give it to her the next time I see her. And she's going to really, really love it. <laughs> she's really going to love it. She's such a funny kid. I've never been asked so many questions and then had someone not listen to the answer. I'm sure every single one of you with children right now is just like, yeah, that's small. I don't have any kids. I never will have kids, so kids are strange. 
But yeah, those are the two quilts that I finished this weekend and I'm very happy with both of them. Um, I'm probably going to be working on some quilts that I have previously cut out over my break, maybe. If I want to, don't have to, not concerned. But yeah, I thought I'd show you that just in case you were interested. Um, I also finished another quilt top that I made for my mother-in-law. She had sent the fabric. It was a Christmas panel that she had bought and she had sent me fabric to do, to just make it bigger, make a border around it. Um, I think I have a little bit of video of that. If I do, I'll insert it. So I just mostly did, um, some foundation paper piecing which I really really enjoy and I just sort of bulked out the background and yeah if I have the video I'll put it here if not I think I have a picture mm. um, but I finished that as well that was I literally sent that at the same time that I sent this unicorn quilt so that was quite a few weeks ago but yeah I'm really really happy with what I've managed to accomplish and now I'm going to take a break <laughs> Um, over this time I might do a little bit of like winding and warping of yarn because I am planning on it, um, continuing the Lord of the Rings collection for yarn next year. I'm going to be doing the two towers. I've pretty much decided it's only going to be four months instead of six this time just because six it does feel like dragging on a bit. But we'll see. I might get ridiculously inspired. I don't know. But yeah, I'm going to be working on that. I might, I'm trying to spend the rest of the December and into the new year doing more, um, like not doing for an update, but doing like color creation, I suppose. Um, which is a lot easier. It's a lot less stressful. <laughs> Actually, it can be stressful, but it's a lot less, you know, time imperative. Anyway, but I'm going to tidy up this mess that I've made and keep watching vlogmas videos and have a great time so ooh, pardon me i will see you next time probably in my plans video and after that who knows <laughs> but i hope you all have a great rest of your week and i will see you next time bye